All right, let's go to the first first talk. It'll be my Martha, Mr. Hengel from Temple. Uh, she will talk about uh, lattice calculation, photo screen, and you know, form factors. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In which format is this? Uh, this is oh, it's PDF. So why does it not uh, allow me to make no slideshow? Full screen. Okay. So there you go. Okay. So uh, yes, uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I was asked to talk about the speed and form factors. Uh, uh, I will use some of the time to uh, talk about also what can we tell about PDFs from that specifically, since there will be other discussions. Um, uh, on other aspects in this uh, se uh, session. Um, so I, my talk will be separated in three parts. I will start the discussion uh, on the form factors uh, uh, aside from uh, some introduction and some large technicalities. Uh, I will focus on the electromagnetic and axial form factors. Uh, there are mm, the results for all kind of current searches that can give us, for example, uh, the scalar charge is very important also for the proton mass. Uh, the tensor charge has already uh, discussed, but I will focus on the, on the electromagnetic and axial uh, here. Uh, I will give an update uh, on what we have done on the proton spin, uh, and then I will briefly mention the X dependence of uh, PDFs and how. Uh, this can be accessed in a, in a non-unique way from lattice QCD, which is uh, uh, a great progress. So this is um, a list of my collaborators so on the different projects that I will uh, talk about. Um, and it's in collaboration with the University of Cyprus, Cyprus Institute, Desit Soitan, and uh, 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 Polish University. Uh, so from the introduction, I don't think I need to spend too much time to motivate uh, uh, this discussion. We all know that uh, the form factors have been under study for uh, many decades now, and it's important to understand the uh, nuclear structure. Uh, for example, the electric and magnetic radii, the magnetic moment, uh, are extracted from the electromagnetic form factors. We know there is tension uh, between uh, experimental measurements, and we are currently trying to understand uh, what is the origin of this uh, tension. Uh, when it comes to the axial form factors, we know that they play a huge role uh, in the intrinsic spin uh, uh, of, uh, of the proton and other uh, hadrons, and also um, it also uh, enters the total quark spin. Uh, which is in coordination with the quark moment uh, structure. Uh, even though this has been discussed for a long time experimentally, there are ambiguities. Uh, for example, uh, the discussion I mentioned on the charge radii, um, a strange electromagnetic form factors, as uh, Selke mentioned, there is some uh, 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 also results that are not. Uh, uh, giving clear signal from the experiments, and there are a lot of uncertainties when it comes to the axial form factors. And extracting, for example, the di the, the axial mass, um, it's a difficult task. There are different fits, and they give not non compatible uh, results. So with this, uh, we understand that it's very important to have uh, a initial. Uh, calculations and lattice QCD is an ideal formulation uh, in the sense that we start from the original uh, QCD Lagrangia and it has been proven reliable for nuclear structures. So I will show you some results related to these topics. Uh, one of the highlights of uh, this summer was the assessment report uh, uh, for the EIC. And this starts by identifying uh, three questions, and this includes the proton spin, uh, the proton mass, uh, and also in the report you will find uh, uh, measurements for PDFs in high accuracy. And uh, what is great for us is that these questions can be addressed in lattice uh, QCD. 
And in fact, the EIC uh, will come at a time where the lattice queues will become reliable, can give reliable results. Uh, we are entering now the exascale computing era that allows us to do uh, faster calculations and have more computer power. Um, we are now computing more reliably CQR contributions as well as global contributions. And uh, as will be discussed in these sessions and tomorrow, uh, we can get the X dependence from, uh, of PDFs from Lattice QCD. So these are a, few, a summary of uh, what one should expect from uh, a Lattice. Uh, when it comes to pattern distribution functions, these are, uh, these are very important tools to describe uh, uh, the hydro structure and um, in particular for the non-perturbative uh, nature of the hadrons. So, uh, they are studied both experimentally and theoretically. They enter the analysis of uh, deep and elastic scattering and data. And here I have uh, some of the, uh, one of the analyses, uh, phenomenological analysis that needs input from phenomenology to decide how one fits uh, uh, the data. Sorry, PDFs are not probability messages, the number messages. Okay, yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So uh, with this, uh, we understand why this is uh, very important and gives us a motivation to start doing from, from the lattice. Uh, so the PDFs are parameterized in terms of all forward matrix elements. Uh, their LICO nature uh, does not allow their direct study on a Euclidean lattice. And historically, we have been studying PDFs through their moments. Uh, uh, on the lattice, and then one can reconstruct them in principle using an operator for expansion, which is a difficult task because so once you go to higher moments, you have two different uh, problems. One is that you have an avoidable operator mixing, uh, so it means you have to renormalize in a certain way, and this makes the extraction of the signal uh, challenging. Uh, and also that the statistical noise uh, is, is increased with the number of covariant derivatives you have on the operator. And uh, however, they do have physical interpretation. So we do study moments and we have quantities that can be used as benchmark by comparing with uh, experiments. So Martha, can I uh, challenge one thing that you're saying? Mm -hmm. And it's just because it is used now lately, it is like, oh, you don't have to measure anymore, let us calculate everything. So you say it's an up initio formulation. Mm -hmm. I don't think that your calculations of PDFs are an up initio calculation of uh, part of distribution functions because you make actually quite some assumptions. And up initio for me would mean I really calculate it with basically no assumption from the beginning to the end. And uh, I don't think that is true for the lattice because you use this, uh, as you said, a moments method. And uh, the question is how, when is it actually kind of uh, a converging that you really have the full uh, PDF and things like this. So I, I, I think I would be a little bit kind of careful with this ab initio. Okay, so with, I, I, I agree with your statement. Uh, when we say a initial formulation, we have in mind that we start from the full QCD Lagrangian. So it's not a model and it's not an assumption we do. It's, it's a true. truncate. It's not a so model. That, that's what it, we, we refer about. Now, I do agree with you that in, 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 we have never been able to actually reconstruct from the moments the PDFs. And that's why we're moving into other directions yeah. as well. So the statement is not for the PDFs, but for the formulation itself. Moments itself, moments themselves, if you consider a initial or as a table of organization, mm -hmm. if that's done correctly. Yes. But reconstructing that. Yeah, yes. exactly. I'm, 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 yes. Exactly. Yes. It is just a, yes. how you understand it. It's, it, it. That's why I'm saying yeah. I, I just. It's it, unfortunate it, that it appears in this slide. <laughs> I mean, the, the statement of initial because it connects with PDFs. That's not we are. Well, not, that's not what we are claiming. Yeah. No, no, it is. Yes. Your, you yes. have the full Lagrangian. I, yes. I agree. Yes. And as such, you yes, that is kind of up in each in this sense, but not necessarily for the mm -hmm. PDF. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I agree with that. 
so how we do our calculation of the lattice, uh, we compute correlation functions, but we, show, we represent them in a, a schematic way as shown here, where we have uh, a connected, uh, what we call a connected diagram. <coughs> That's a nice we, I have new batteries. Uh, so the upper diagram is what we call the connected diagram. Um, yeah, I have here the creation and annihilation of the hydron of interest, in this case the nucleon, and at some point there is a current uh, insertion. What uh, is very important for us is the separation between the source and the sea and this represents uh, ground state dominance. That's what we want to uh, uh, modify this uh, separation in order to ensure ground state dominance. And of course, this uh, is not the only contribution to extract uh, uh, quark quantities. One has to take into account connected quark loops, um, where the current interacts with the nucleon through gluon exchange, and more recently, we were able to compute uh, gluon contribution using uh, a gluonic operator that interacts with the uh, nucleon. Um, and uh, this methodology can be used for any current insertion. Uh, we can have local operators, ultra-local operators, for, to get the electromagnetic form factors, axial form factors. Uh, we can also have uh, operators with covariant derivatives to get, for example, the quark momentum fraction um, of, uh, of uh, uh, the hydron. And uh, more recently, non-local operators, uh, such as uh, operators that have Wilson lines or staples, and this gives us other quantities of interest. Uh, there will be discussions about this in other talks as well. Of particular interest are the two lower diagrams uh, for EIC physics because they will give, uh, for example, the strange core contributions and also the gluonic uh, ones. Um, extracting reliable data from the lattice is uh, a very challenging process and we do spend a lot of resources uh, to make sure that we uh, have the systematic uncertainty under control. Uh, but uh, first, we have to uh, tackle the uh, <coughs> signal-to-noise ratio. We need to make sure we can extract the signal reliably. And uh, as we go to a physical point, which is simulating uh, with quarks that are fixed to their physical ma masses, uh, then the effort and the computational cost increases significantly. Uh, so we do spend a lot of resources to simulate at the physical point because this is the world we want to describe. Um, for four factors, we need to have momentum transfer between the initial and final state. And I guess we, uh, there we, we need to have a clear signal. And as I mentioned earlier, the separation between the source and the sink that will ensure excited state suppression. Uh, when it comes to systematic uncertainties, there, there are a few that we try to uh, keep under control. For example, finite Latin spacing effect. And this is also in connection with how one decides to discretize the QCD Lagrangian. What is the lattice action of uh, interest? Um, we simulate on finite boxes, which means we might have finite volume effects if we don't use large uh, volumes. Um, excited states effects, uh, chiral extrapolation if we are not uh, at the physical point, and last but not least is normalization and mixing, and this has been proven very important, for example, for PBS. Uh, uh, the results I will show in a moment uh, have been extracted by the ETM collaboration uh, using a specific formulation called uh, twisted mass. Uh, we have, uh, for the form factor, we have three ensembles, all of them at the physical point. Uh, each one has an, improve, an improvement from the previous one, for example, larger volumes or number of dynamical flavors. And this allows us to um, uh, to study volume effects, for example, and quenching effects. And as you can see, all of them are at the physical point. 
uh, then the statistics that is required is, uh, has to be large mm -hmm. enough in order to be able to uh, study systematic uncertainties. Uh, this requires that, that the statistical are under control to see the difference of 5 to 10% uh, that may be caused by systematic uncertainties. So this is just um, a table showing uh, the number of measurements that we have. Uh, I will talk about uh, disconnected diagrams and, for example, the uh, strange graph contributions. And these uh, we were able to do uh, thanks to uh, specific computer architecture. We are using GPUs uh, for these calculations, as well as uh, special techniques uh, that we have employed. They have been developed uh, some by us and some by uh, other members of the Lattice community, Costa Servinos and uh, Andreas Atopoulos have uh, developed hierarchical probing, for example, that allows us to get the, form the strange form factors with very high accuracy, as you will see uh, in a moment. And uh, what do we study? We study all the diagrams I have shown, which allows us to do um, uh, calculations of the isovector, isoscalar combinations, and we also are able to do flavor decomposition because we have computer disconnected diagrams up to the charm quark, which I don't show here because for the nucleon we, we find to be negligible within error bars. Uh, starting with the electromagnetic form factors, so these are some uh, uh, data we obtained with our most recent uh, example. Uh, ensemble, we have to go up to separations between the source and the seed that are as large as 1.6 Fermi. Uh, we have claimed in the past that uh, um, separations of, of around 1 Fermi are enough uh, to study hadron structure quantities, uh, but with modern ensembles, we see that this has to be uh, increased uh, to get. Um, to suppress the excited states. Uh, so we find that 1.6 Fermi is a separation between the initial and final states in order to have suppressed excited states. So, so what is the what, which one is the lattice and the red one? Yeah, the lattice are, the, the, the data points are the lattice oh. data. Um, experimental feed is the black points. The other two, the bands, are feeds on these, uh, on, the, on the blue points. So the, the red and green are fit on the blue points. And you see, I mean, immediately you see that there is some tension in the slope uh, of the lattice data. And this is something we have seen for many years uh, in the past with heavier pyro mass ensembles. But what we find is that this slope is, uh, that the tension between uh, the experimental and lattice data becomes smaller with, um, uh, better controlling of the systematic uncertainties. Uh, uh, well, this proton and combination of proton and neutron uh, electromagnetic form factors. I have the reference. I can I can show it. Uh, I can I can give it to you. Um, so, uh, for example, we have seen that uh, analysis techniques that we one can use, which is not uh, uh, a single state fits or many multi state uh, fits or some, some method we call the summation method, this seems to move downwards, but the statistical uncertainties are much larger. So, it's inconclusive of, of what happens. We are still increasing statistics with this uh, kind of data and see. Well, so, uh, it, it supports uh, the, the lattice supports a dipole picture, but with a different lambda, with a different dipole parameter. Yes, that's, yes, that's, that's yes. What that's what we find. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So the slope is 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 a problematic. The good thing is that uh, the different uh, techniques uh, of of to, to perform the feed they are consistent for this quantity. So the dipole yes is supported, but the z expansion is also. Which so have been using the axial form factor. Physical pion mass and, um, and it's, it's two plus one plus one, so you have a dynamic, uh, you have a strange and a charm in, in the C, 
uh, and the volume is uh, 64 cubed, which corresponds to um, uh, it's 64. Yes. So I mean, there is a visible distortion. Yes, yes. So what should the yes? That's what is the remaining <laughs> So what we are doing currently that we increase the statistics on this ensemble on this kind of data, and we have other separations which are smaller than one point six Fermi, <coughs> and we aim at analyzing everything together using alternative techniques that, that can catch different EEB excited states. And the hope is that this will move downwards. We have some indication of the mean values going downwards, but uh, the, lar the statistic colors are large. So, so it's, it's just an effect that might not be bars, made. Are there are the statistic error bars. These are jackknife uh, error bars. Um, Do you expect the points to move two or three sigma down? Yes, if 1.6 Fermi still has excited states. You so you might not get the ground state with this. Uh, uh, we have, but uh, we have not. So, so I agree. What you're saying is that uh, if I take into account systematic answer, then the disease error bars will be larger. I think that's what you're saying. Yes, it's, it's there, but we have not quantified them because we haven't finalized the analysis. So the real picture, if you take into account systematic uncertainty, is, is larger. Yes. Is it possible that volume still have to take Yes, volume. Yes, 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 could be. Yes. Uh, the problem with volume effect is that it's very slow to investigate. You need more ensembles. And this means one, two years of uh, extra effort. But uh, we are getting there. We have uh, we are planning two more ensembles that have similar parameters. The, the other parameters need the same, so, so the larger volume. But if I, as an exponentialist, if I look at this, is, the first thing is I'm sure that the fit by Algarico et al. as an uncertain event. And uh, so the question actually is how big is the discrepancy between lattice and the fit to the data? Because uh, there is quite some discussion about the uh, form factors. Huh? Mm -hmm. We have two methods which don't agree, and all this type of things. Less that says low Q squared becomes a disagreement, becomes a higher Q squared. Uh, so I think for everybody should plot systematic uncertainties. And I understand that you are not yet there, but yes. the experimental one has for sure as well. So. Yeah. And uh, I think it would be good to plot this and then to see whether then the discrepancy is still on the three sigma level, or it's yes. kind of overlaps. So why not just put the experimental data? And also fine, yes. Right? That's like also fine. Absolutely, absolutely. Like jumping around yeah. each other. Then How you do this? I'm, I'm completely. I have I, no. I don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is yes, and then you might create political tension between the two communities. Yeah, yeah. no, but it, it's just yes, that yes. there is quite some discussion but, on what you actually what the form factors are. <laughs> yes, uh, actually, uh, it's, it's not our goal to get the same value as the experimentalists. For example, for PDFs, we know that there is some tension between different uh, estimates, phenomenological estimates. So we are not trying to find a way to agree. We are trying to do the best we can, and uh, we think we can improve the picture from the lattice data. Um, this is what we see currently. But it's important yes. to do, but it's also important to show what the experiment actually mm -hmm. knows. Mm -hmm. Yes. But yes. You know, I said anybody has done a calculation so that it agrees with experiments with uh, the The only thing I have seen is uh, um, a work by uh, LHPC that they use a summation methods. Uh, and there they find consistently that um, with the summation method, the results go downwards towards the experiment. But for their mass, their mass is not I think their mass is 300 and it yeah, be, I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am not so sure about all the details, yeah. but it's, there's a, a trend of lowering the value with the summation. Mm. We also see it here, but the errors are large, so it doesn't mean anything. It just maybe uh, deceiving the eye by 
seeing the mean value going down. It's, it doesn't say anything on the error bars. So. When the uh, it was NHPC calculation with the chiral extrapolation because they were at, at large mass. Mm -hmm. And so but that chiral extrapolation, they claim at terms and they made them agree with this fact. So how come now you're at the higher mass? So you, you disagree with the lattice with the chiral extrapolation? Yes, but the la the uh, the chiral extrapolation for the baryon sector it's not very reliable. It's not on the mesem for the mesem sector is very reliable. For the hadron, it's less reliable, I would say. I mean, there are many parameters that you have to decide. It's, it's more complicated, and you can have severe systematics. Yeah, there's a log, and so that whenever you have that, 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 can, yes. that can easily go. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay. So yes. that's why we want to be at the physical point where you don't have to worry extrapolating from 500 MeV to uh, 100 and, uh, so that's uh, it's it's a struggle in the community uh, trying to understand the systematics. Uh, I agree, it's very sensitive to different effects, and sometimes it's a combination of different things. So it's not purely volume effects; it could be partly kind of state effects, and they get amplified by uh, finite volume effects. Uh, um, but what I want to stress is that we take this very seriously and we try to quantify uh, the uncertainty that we can and refine methods that uh, <laughs> uh, give extraction of this, um, uh, of this data. For example, it's, it's a, a, a lot of, uh, it's very challenging to get the feeds, to do a reliable feed. What is a reliable feed? when you have discretized data and we can never reach the number of data that experiments have to get the radii. And I have a slide on that uh, to show how this can fluctuate by a change in the methods. Uh, okay, so let me move on. So similar results, the same analysis can also give the magnetic uh, form factors. Uh, and here we have seen something which, again, we have seen for, uh, for all of this data so far that the slow but around two equals zero is uh, not as steep as uh, the experiment. Uh, what we find though is that for this kind of the simulations at the physical point, for this ensemble I am uh, showing here, this, the tension again is less severe. We have uh, more flat data around uh, three, uh, for heavier pion masses, and these uh, go to 3.5 and a bit higher for, uh, 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 for the physical point with a value of around 4.1 um, uh, as a, as a from the extrapolation. Uh, so here I have a plot, it's, it's rather technical. I already have this discussion on excited state. We have multiple ensembles, and we use the, the, the higher separation uh, to plot here, and because we also see that there is excited state, so uh, it's not clear if it has absolutely converged for every single value of uh, h square. Um, so uh, this is a very exciting plot uh, uh, slide, I would say, because it shows the uh, disconnected diagrams uh, the results for the electromagnetic form factors. Uh, and this uses uh, the techniques I already mentioned. For example, we have implemented uh, hierarchical probing, and you see how clear you get a signal for a quantity that is it's extremely small. So this is the uh, U plus D contribution from the disconnected diagram that has C for contributions for the magnetic and the electric, which should be uh, flipped. Uh, and you see how small the signal is, but we get results that are clearly away from uh, zero. Uh, this is uh, also shown for the scale, for the strange contributions, uh, where you see that an order of magnitude less than the uh, light quarks, and the two orders of magnitude less than the corresponding uh, balanced quark contributions for the connected diagram. And um, with, um, the electric one much smaller than the magnetic one. And this is a demonstration that uh, 
techniques have been very useful to get real physics and get uh, uh, the strangeness of um, of the uh, nucleon and uh, also that these are not negligible so <coughs> when we are trying to uh, compare with the experiments this have to be taken into account and i have a, a, a for the axial form factors i have a, a plot putting everything together now uh what about the fits uh, as i said we can use dipole fits uh, and uh, also uh, a model independent uh, expansion the z expansion that uh, it's expected uh, to model better the log q square dependence that's what the motivation is uh, behind this um, and from each one we can get the charge radii and I have them here for the three examples that I showed in the table at the beginning uh, these are all the physical points but they have different volumes so for example you see that as we increase the sourcing separation to suppress excited states uh, you see an upward trend for both the magnetic and the electric one uh, and we do find non-negligible effects for uh, higher separations. So this is important to have uh, uh, samples at, at large volume. And what I want to show is a comparison between different uh, collaborations that just to demonstrate that this is a sensitive quantity to extract. Uh, so this is for the electric magnetic uh, radii, uh, the magnetic moment as well, uh, from different collaborations. The first three, po the, the three lowest points are the ensembles that uh, we used, uh, and uh, you see the accuracy of the data. Uh, other collaborations that find similar results uh, and are in agreement with ours, so with statistical uncertainties but there is some tension with certain uh, results from other formulations and this is mostly because of the analysis techniques so uh, as i said it's a sensitive quantity to extract and um, from the data i have shown in the disconnected uh, diagrams we can extract the uh, strange contribution and the light contribution disconnected uh, we have less data here. These are more uh, difficult to extract quantities uh, with uh, uh, an evidence the light quarks because it's much more costly to get compared to the strange quark contributions. And you see that uh, this kind of data I have shown uh, earlier, uh, they can be fitted and get. Um, the radii and eventually you can do a flavor decomposition to extract the individual up down and stage parts sorry just a mm -hmm. question negative radio square means negative derivative um, this is yes so this is uh, yes, yes yes because so you see here square yes okay <laughs> yes so this is instead of this data here mm -hmm. Um, okay, so now moving to the axial form factors, uh, the idea is similar. Uh, what changes from the electromagnetic technical is that you have to insert an axial current instead of uh, electromagnetic current. And uh, that's not the end of the story because each quantity suffers from different systematic uncertainties. So you have to make sure that the uh, conclusions you have drawn from the electromagnetic don't influence uh, other quantities. Um, uh, so this is for the isovector combination uh, for uh, GA, and this is to compare the three ensembles. And if you see here that the picture is pretty much consistent, we see less excited states uh, on the axial form factors, and this includes also uh, feeds on our data and also experimental data and we do find that it is consistent with uh, uh, the recent uh, analysis of Mayer et, et al. And as a demonstration of how sensitive this quantity is, I have here the uh, uh, axial uh, radius and uh, it's uh, the first is experimental extraction 
Uh, the other two are from other formulations, uh, from other lattice groups. And the last six points are from the work that I have uh, shown you, uh, this kind of data here. And uh, the color corresponds to different techniques. This is the Dibon feed, and this is the Z expansion, which, as I said, is model independent. And you do see that uh, if you make a certain choice of not enough large sourcing separation, you will have tension between results. So um, we want to focus on the higher separation, which is consistent between the two methods. But the price you have to pay is that the statistical uncertainties are, are larger because of the noise uh, uh, contamination. Which, excuse me, which errors are shown in this? These are statistical errors. These are only statistical errors. If you want to add, for example, systematic uncertainty, a trivial uh, way to add something is to take the difference between the three, uh, and that could be um, systematic due to excited states. You can take uh, the difference between blue and red, and this will be due to some analysis technique. So in, in principle, you can uh, do that. And that's a proper way to do if you want to take into account the systematic uncertainty. This is a two plus one plus one. Yes, it's a two plus one plus one, 64 Q at the physical point. <coughs> so why do you include the dipole thing? Why should... Do I, uh, because traditionally we have been doing it for many years, it's interesting to see how sensitive the data uh, are in that. Do you know that it's not really the right thing? Yes. Uh, so it would be an overestimate of systematics to include that in this. Yes, a oh, fair point, yes. So you can take the effect from the different sourcing separation to other systematic. Uh, yes, it's just... Uh, Looking at this data, you can see it could be something like a type of this, something that traditionally has been done. I think that's the point, but now we're moving into the Z expansion uh, era. Um, this is, uh, let me see a plot on the uh, U plus D contribution. Uh, and I have here, uh, a, a summary of the data contributing to the axial and the induced scalar form factors coming from the different contributions as a demonstration how large the answer the how large the um, uh, disconnected diagram contribution is and what you see with the red points is the co connected diagram and this of course is the larger contribution for both of them and then we have disconnected light parts. This is the blue points. And with the, red, with the green points, you see the, the strange part contribution, which are, are an order of magnitude less. Um, but the point is that if you add all of them together to get uh, uh, U plus the total, which is um, the blue and the red, you get this uh, maroon color, and you see that these connected diagrams are not negligible as we have claimed a decade ago with simulations at non-physical high mass. And uh, more interesting is the case of the induced of scalar where we have a pion pole, um, but the same and opposite behavior we have for the disconnected uh, contributions and adding the two together, it gives a flatter behavior for the induced of scalar form factor. So this is uh, the progress we have made in the form factors. Uh, I want to talk about the proton spin uh, uh, very briefly. And uh, we all know that uh, there have been questions on the origin of the uh, proton uh, spin. And uh, we hope that the life is QCD will reveal uh, some insights on how the proton spin is, uh, arises. And uh, we have been traditionally using the G spin sum rule because it's gauge invariant and we can compute the different contributions uh, in lattice QCD of the uh, gluon spin, the intrinsic spin, which is related to the uh, axial charge and the quark orbital angular momentum, which is the total quark spin. And then one can extract indirectly the uh, quark orbital angular momentum. Of course, there are the decomposition. Cafe is uh, also computing the uh, gluon spin 
using uh, Manohar as a compensation. Uh, but I guess you will talk about this. No. no. Okay. Uh, so the computations that are needed to do the spin is some of them I have already shown is the axial charge, which is a forward limit of uh, the axial form factors, a twilight momentum fraction, and also below momentum fraction. Uh, I will not go into details. This is already a years old result uh, uh, on the axial charge, and this shows uh, different analysis techniques at the physical point uh, that. Uh, uh, by reducing excited states, you move towards the experimental point. Uh, the situation with the quark momentum fraction is uh, um, it's more severe compared to the axial charge due to excited states contamination. We find that it could be up to 10 to 15 percent. Uh, so it's important to uh, go to higher sourcing separation. And when it comes to the global <coughs> momentum fraction, a calculation that we started in 2013, we completed in 2015, and we find that the excited states are uh, almost negligible for this quantity. And similar results uh, we have from the disconnected diagrams uh, in order to do a flavor decomposition, and these will allow us to uh, get a picture of the program speed, and this is what uh, I have uh, here. This, uh, uh, it's uh, a summary of the different contributions to the total spin, uh, which is uh, one half. Uh, here I have with the uh, stride segments, these are the connected diagram, diagram contributions, and you see that these are not enough to get to one half. It's almost half of the uh, proton spin. And by adding together the disconnected, which are the solid segments, and the gluon contributions, we are able to go to uh, one half. Uh, excuse me? What do you talk about the speed? Oh, this is a slow speed. Right. The, the picture is very similar because the total, the uh, momentum is average x. So, basically, B2 zero. Yes, so B2 zero, we we indirectly have seen this is zero because uh, for the for the quarks this is zero and due, due to some rules the total b to zero has to be zero so indirectly we know that it should be zero or almost negligible this is small probably yes <laughs> well, we do find yeah, one assumes that the there is a certain uh, some rule being uh, uh, satisfied. But this particular sum rule, but which uh, is the total spin to be one half, this comes out uh, without enforcing it. So we add actually, we have computed each one of these contributions independently, and we just add them together to see what we get and this goes to one half. Um, so you uh, again, what uh, what? Uh, so that, that number that you have, I call it B eleven percent. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. That number includes orbital. Uh, yes, but the or yes, that is true. But the the orbital we don't get directly from from this decomposition. So so it's so included, we, but we. Know, we know that is in the moment that we get this here. But that's what the if you get sigma that is negative. No, because what we compute on the lattice, and this is what I try to say here, on the lattice you get the total spin and you get the intrinsic spin. And indirectly you get the quark orbital angular momentum by subtracting the two. So when we when we compute J, it is not a sum of the orbital angular momentum and the intrinsic spin. You get it directly from the lattice data. But from this one, uh, from this data, <coughs> and by subtracting the intrinsic spin, you can get the quark orbital angular momentum. And I have, I have a plot, I don't have it here, but I can show it to you later if you, if you want. And yes, for the down quark, it's negative. What is the quark into zero? It's not, it's not, uh, oh. Within the, the, the yes. I was about to say that the coke is zero. 
Well, we find it. Uh, it just happened to be true. In, in the quench, in the quench box ratio, which we did many years ago, uh, it is uh, as a small. It is some of the, the momentum, the, the blue is one way, and part is the other way. We find it to but, be but, zero. But it's, um, yeah, we are working on it. We don't have it. So the quench box ratio is small, but not zero. They found it to be zero. Yes. Explanation. I'm sorry. Explanation. Uh, so one needs probably. It's hard to say because uh, we need probably better uh, different different calculations to show that. Yes, you don't you, oh, you don't get it directly from uh, from uh, the lattice data. You have to feed the Q square dependence to get this. Uh, so there you have already. Physical reason, right? There is no physical reason for that. They, and also, there's no, we'll probably have some dispute. There's no physical reason that when you do lattice calculation, that they all sum up to one or one half of the speed. Because uh, the thing is, there's no conserved current. There's no different, you know, differential uh, translation and so on. On the lattice, they don't have conserved current, not like the actual convective current or vector current. Therefore, uh, you have to do the two actual collations. And then uh, so show it, uh, have to do normalizations or or and renormalization, mm -hmm. and this they are very good. <laughs> probably opposite, probably very close to getting to one. It could be a uh, uh, not a rule, but uh, it could be just just. Uh, the same holds for the. We, we don't get the one because we never can get one. You're not in the continuum. There is a, a formulation by Suzuki and so on. That's probably a good way. You have to do Wilson flow or gradient flow, uh, put a normalization into the continuum. It's very complicated with five operators and so on. Here we usually use just one operator. So, um, and this is one ensemble. In principle, you have to you need at least three ensembles to do continuum extrapolation. Right. So three yeah, lattice spacing, and these are effects that can uh, it, it will affect, but we expect this to be small. It well, could be small. No, this Wait. Sorry. So, so how, how um, you say, okay, this is one ensemble only, right? So, yes. But, but how can we then, what should we make of these error? Um, this error, okay, these I mean, errors the are. Example, <coughs> plus minus three, yes. um, so this so. is not taking into account um, uh, discretization effects because we haven't done the continuum limit, but it does take into account different effects. It is, it is a combination of statistical uncertainties. Uh, it is uh, also excited states. In this error, is an error coming from a statistical excited states renormalization, uh, all combined into one. See, so what concerns me so much is that the same calculation gives you also 27% for the metric range, right? Which is completely wrong. So, how can you think that these errors could be at all realistic? There have been a lot of discussions about I this, yeah. and there are people saying that. Uh, also, this is uh, I know the experiments are also overestimate uh, well, the value. So this is what we get from this calculation. Which experiments are we talking about? No experiments, experiments or that uh, is global uh, fe phenomenological uh, fields. So they have only one lattice. It's not clear what. Yeah, that's why. That's why. But the thing is, you you know, notice something when you sum up the quarks. Uh, it's uh, like. Uh, it's well, 73 percent experimentally. What I expect CT 14, right? That 2 GeV, I think it's 2 GeV, mm -hmm. is about uh, 48 percent. Uh, 48 percent. So the blue is 42 percent. They got 30, 30, 37 percent. Right. So that's a C so, so, so this is this is my question. If they think of the face value, yeah, right? They get 82 percent for all the quarks. The but the fits give right. say 48 or 47. Uh, 48. So there's something, but okay. Right. Factor of two difference. Where, where, where does oh, this come from? Also, the factor of it's, it's almost thirty percent with a, within uncertainty. The, the glue one you mean? Oh, no, 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 I'm talking about the quark. Oh, for the quark. Oh, all the quark together. What's a factor of two uh, from the two more? I'm talking about my complexion now. Oh, I understand your complexion. I'll give you some results which tomorrow, uh, which our momentum sum doesn't come to one, but used to a normalization. When you bring everything, you have to first of all to do non perturbative renormalization and then the normalization. I'll show you the results tomorrow but, from several But then you, you enforce the sum rules. Yeah, that's what yeah. you do. Okay. You, you, okay. you force the charge to be one, no? 
Uh, when you take a local car, you never get one. You have a ZB to get one. Yes. And so ZA to be one point something. Yeah, we we like exactly to believe that this is also um, a check of the system of the systematic uncertainties because uh, I agree with you. One way to do it is to do the conserve current, and then you get right. GE one, for example. Right. And then you do the local current, right. you do separately the normalization, you multiply the two and you see two, you get one. Here, so you don't, the, the energy will the tensor on the yeah. labels, you will never get a surf current unless you do what is suitable. Yeah. Other people, so, so you're, much more complicated. You're suggesting you one, um, one current, so you never get one. In principle, you never get one. Yeah. So, <clears> this <throat> is not the end of the story, it's just. Uh, uh, I mean, the first picture and uh, it's, a, it's a very hard yes. calculation, but this is right there it's to their credit. <laughs> Marsh, uh, it's getting very hard calculation, but, but we need more uh, understanding and more calculations to see how the situation But I think this gives the misleading conception that we understand that. Yes, I mean, it's only it's, it's all it's no, no. Oh, this uh, is the current picture we get. Right. So this is for this is, this is for values and sequel contributions. Yes. Both values and sequel contributions. I don't think this is forty percent. No, this is not the same. No, 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 no. No, no this is a total speed. It, it, yeah, it includes it's also the yes. Yeah, it also includes the orbital. You cannot orbital. compare with anything which we have measured. What we know about orbital momentum is usually negative. So it means that the signal is in the I don't think we really know orbital angular momentum. Yeah, or the, uh, and, yeah but the hours are like this. And on the gluons, we know absolutely nothing. So this number has, the gluon number is nothing which we can measure. So far, they have assumed that the window fraction is the same as angular mm -hmm. fraction. That's why. They yeah, but that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. and this is a, this is the total spin that includes indirectly the uh, orbital. So, yes. so what you're saying, mm -hmm. half of it is orbital. Uh, I'm not orbital. saying half of it because I, I need to see no. what delta yeah, sigma yeah. is. <laughs> but I can show you a plot that I don't remember the numbers. I have isolated the orbital angular momentum using delta sigma and i can show this i can tell you for for, for da, down quark i remember it's negative so then delta sigma is for the down quark well okay but and the most of the contribution comes from the up quark so uh, let's uh, let's see the plot and then we see there's the a problem. search in many calculations many calculations the connect search will use this kind of stuff so mm -hmm. the other yes the becomes out uh, totally from almost totally from the, the disconnected surface. Yes. Where in the quench approximation, when Phil finds his total angular moment is close to zero, and where the spin is negative, therefore orbital is positive. That's and something this has been find. uh, so finding uh, uh, orbital angular momentum zero from the connected has raised a lot of questions in the past. This cannot be totally zero, but we know there is a large disconnected contribution. Uh, yeah. In what? In the orbital angular momentum. Yeah, right, because total angular momentum is close mm -hmm. to zero. In yes. that case, then the negative spin will bring up a positive orbit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's unfortunate we didn't, I didn't have uh, this plot uh, here. So, again, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. So, is it the case that lattice comes to zero in two moments? Or, or, let's say, delta U, delta U and delta U? Yes, or no question. yes, the intrinsic okay. speed. Yes. <laughs> and so if those numbers have been published. Yes. Okay. So in principle, we should be able to have an agreement with phenomenology. I have the numbers and their agreement. So delta sigma uh, it's in agreement with what we find what we find from this calculation is an agreement with uh, experimental data and phenomenology. So then it's huge. Yes, come from orbital angular momentum. No, this is oh, this yeah. is a total spin, but total spin and orbital angular uh, and uh, total momentum, they are related to each other, except from this V two zero, which we find, find to be very small. So I mean, <laughs> the very clear. Okay, in the discussion tomorrow, I will put the plot of well, delta sigma. Angular, but it's not the speed. This is total, including the orbital. That's yes. 
Right. And spin plus orbital angular momentum, which is very large. If delta yes. sigma agrees with the data, which is 30 something percent. Yes. Uh, then half of this uh, UTS yes. bar is orbital angular momentum. Good. What yes. you is that you what you mean? Because it should be half and 30. Yeah, yeah. Which is point four one. No, but right. in terms of percentage. That's 40%. One half delta sigma is 30 something. 40 percent. Okay. 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 And, and she has 22 percent. So half of this yeah. is one half delta sigma. So I already did it myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will show the friendly yeah. discussion tomorrow and see exactly the numbers. You have more. Well, uh, yeah, I have to stop, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I, mean, I saw it was too much time and I was okay. going to talk well, about it, but it's the, fine. I, I can't stop point. here. I think we'll, we'll invite you, you know, everyone to the, to the discussion mm -hmm. tomorrow afternoon because this is a lot of things will be, uh, we'll uh, be discussed in more detail. Let's get right on with the time. That's the thing. 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 That's the we can discuss that um, yeah, which is maybe tomorrow uh, or afternoon. Things. If you want to sort that out this afternoon, this is a topic. Maybe Martha can do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how's this? Where? Oh, here's you. Oh.